finally time to unbox the Starling. I have been waiting to do this for like three weeks now, but have been very sidetracked with doing more than mechanical issues like replacing tires and spark plugs and I'll get into that later. From what I've been researching, this is very easy to set up. You just kind of plug it in and turn it on and then the dish finds the satellite and you have Wi-Fi within 15 minutes. So we're gonna unbox it and see what happens. For unboxing the Starlink, I was actually amazed at how little packaging there was in this. Apart from struggling to get the box open here for the first couple seconds, uh, there really isn't much to it. I mean, you slide out that cardboard holder and then the dish is sitting on top until we flip that out of there. And you can see all the components inside of it are there. And I really like this cardboard cutout. Actually, we still use this to transport it because everything just fits in there so nicely. And it really doesn't take up that much space. We throw it under the couch and we haven't had any issues with it yet. First thing I noticed is that this thing is way bigger than I thought it was going to be. It looks like this might be one of the newer models as opposed to the other ones people had where they're like the size of the dinner plates. I also don't think this model rotates. Uh, so we're going to see how that works. Here is everything that came with the box. We have the Wi-Fi router. We have the power cord for it, the power bank for the router. And then we have the dish connector to the router. And like I said, there is the dish, absolutely massive. And we're going to connect it. Here is our super small printed instruction manuals with 32 different languages on it, but we only need this section. Here's just a quick summary of my setup. We got the router here plugged in, got it plugged into the wall behind the garbage can, and then we have the 70 foot cord plugged into the back of the dish like so. Here is the app when you log on. It just kind of has you start the setup so once you click that, you'll then choose your dish. We have the Gen 3 flat one with the kickstand. Once you choose that, you just wait for it to find a clear view of the sky here. It takes a little bit. Then you just gotta give some permissions here to Starlink in order for it to work properly. And then you gotta find the obstructions in the area. So you just scan the sky. It will be all these little dots here. You just have to have them hit the screen. It takes like 15 seconds to get them all. And once you do that, it can calculate the obstructions in the sky. So we just got them all here and then you have to wait for it to get the results. This takes a minute or so. I fast forwarded it here for you so you don't have to wait for it the first time and the second time goes much faster and then you can see all the obstructions that we have here. And then once you continue, it will show you how to install mounts. If you have a mount, we didn't have a mount. So we're going to click the continue without a mount with just the kickstand. And then from here, you can see that it is plugged in and powered on. So one thing you do have to do that we didn't find is you do have to connect the device that you are using the app on to the Starlink Wi-Fi right away in order for it to connect and start up. So then you continue and you can see here it's starting to boot right away. The first time it did it for us, I believe it took five to 10 minutes. And while that was happening, we went in right away and named our Wi-Fi. We didn't set a password, but you can set a password. You can go back in and do it after pretty easily. And once you set all that up, it'll take a minute or two until it connects. And while that's happening, you can go through this menu on the bottom here and see all the options that are available once it does connect. Like I said, the first time it does take a little bit and you'll see the progress bar on the bottom there. It'll slowly go up. It'll go past like booting and connected and orientation and everything like I said the first time this took us probably five to ten minutes before it really got connected and started working but now we move it almost every day and it takes one to five minutes max until it connects and works great like I was saying earlier right now it's calculating the orientation and once it says Starlink connected that doesn't mean your Wi-Fi is good to use it means it's found the satellite and it will be once it shows its online status that means it is good to use and you can go in right away and check your statistics. Here you can see that we do have Wi-Fi. You can see the graph going and the numbers it's running at. Looks like it's running pretty good. It starts out a little slow every time, but then it picks back up really easily. And you can look at this as much as you want. We honestly only look at it once, maybe twice every couple of weeks, and then we go back. The big thing we really care about is the speed test, which they have a really easy, quick option. You just click speed test. It takes 
anywhere from like 10 seconds to maybe a minute max to run it. I mean, you can see we've got over 180 megabytes per second, which is just phenomenal Wi-Fi. It seems to be it really was that simple. As you can see here, we got the Wi-Fi all connected and have great connection and we can run Google and we can, you know, do whatever we want. We open our Gmail and loads right up. So we got great internet speed here. And my biggest concern was gonna be, is just the dish gonna be enough with the trees and stuff we have here and there is plenty of clearance for it not to rotate and still get great connection. Overall, I say it was very simple, it took like 15, maybe 20 minutes, and most of that was just the satellites connecting to the dish. And now I have a great Wi-Fi, and we'll use it for a couple weeks and uh, send an update video on how good the connection is working.